Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. And welcome to another episode of Likeable Science. I'm your host, Ethan Allen, here on Think Tech Hawaii. Thanks for joining us today. Likeable Science is all about how science is a vital, interesting part of everyone's life, uh, part of the world around us, and we should all learn about science, we should embrace it and enjoy it, we should not think of it as something confined to the ivory tower and distant laboratories. It, it is all around us. Today I have with me my friend Daryl Carroll. He's back uh, again. Daryl uh, was with, with me a couple months ago. A couple months ago, yeah. And, thanks for having me back. Yeah, well, it's great. He's just been up in Japan uh, at a conference on radiation, and we were talking about that, and thought, well, let's, let's, let's talk about some radiation stuff and, and yeah. get, get a show on it. So. Yeah. Um, maybe first, uh, maybe give, give an overview of the, your, what you learned in this conference in Japan. Um, so the uh, Japanese conference was in Hiroshima, and I think we all know the, you know, the significance of that. Um, I think what I learned, it was a very short conference, about four days, and the field of nuclear medicine and physics is so broad right. that it was tough for me to you know, learn um, a lot of take-home points, but what I think I did uh, take back with me is the appreciation of the Japanese culture and how they deal with disasters. Uh -huh. And I mean, throughout the Japanese history uh, or the history of Japan, they've had so many earthquakes, so many tsunamis. And back in 2013, when um, when the tsunami hit and the earthquake hit, I mean, it was a 9.2 Richter on the Richter scale. That's huge. huge. That's massive. A huge tsunami. Yeah, and a hu 150 feet in some places. Yeah. You know, and you know, 18,000 people were wiped off the right. face of the earth. Knocked out a nuclear power plant. And then a nuclear power. So the earthquake, tsunami, and a nuclear fallout disaster, right. all in one fall swoop. Fall swoop. <laughs> like if that happened anywhere in any other country, uh, I. I in the United States, I think everybody would be pulling their hair out. And the Japanese have adapted themselves from this far in their, their history that they just, you know, did what they had to do. And so it's kind of, uh, they've you know, put it into their culture. And we were even like, uh, the, I think all the four no local news channels came and, you know, where it made sure that everyone knew that all these physicians from all over the world, there were some from Mongolia, some from Brazil, we're coming to learn from these experts in radiation poisoning because they really are their experts. Sure, they, they've had some of the some of the big the big cases of it. You know, yep. where, where the, the only real use of nuclear weapons in war were, were of course, Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Sure. So, yeah. Yeah. We're gonna, we're gonna uh, take a little different tack today, though, in in the show, and and talk about something a little closer to home here, and and perhaps less well known, less less widely appreciated. Yeah. Which is that the 67, not just one, not just a dozen, but 67 different nuclear tests that were done in the Marshall Islands. I was astounded when I heard that. I yeah. thought it might have been, you know, my prelim knowledge a couple or some 67. Yeah, 67. And that was just U.S. bombs, right? Didn't the French? The French did, did some elsewhere. I don't oh, really even know about that. Somewhere in the, they, yeah. they don't disclose, but somewhere in the Pacific. Yeah, but it wasn't, anyway. it wasn't an RMI, I don't think. I think yeah. those are all U.S. Okay. Uh, yeah. Um, and naturally that's caused huge disruptions and there are lingering health effects. Indeed, the first time I went to Majuro, Right across the parking lot, my hotel, there is a, uh, a center that says something like U.S. Agency for International Development Whole Body Counting Center. And I was sort of taken aback by looking at that. Do I need to go over there? <laughs> <laughs> right. well, what, what is this? And yeah. not to realize it's part of the legacy. There are people who, who got massive doses of radiation who are uh, they're still sort of monitoring these people, sure. basically. Yeah. But maybe we should start out with talking a little bit about sort of what radiation is. I mean, radiation is used as a very broad term, right? Yeah. Heat radiates out, sunlight radiates down upon us. But yeah. we're not talking about that, right? Yeah, we're talking about uh, ionizing radiation. And right. what we typically think of when a nuclear bomb is right. um, ionizing radiation. And even x-rays that you take for of your hand, of your chest, that is a type of radiation. And that is released by a nuclear right. bomb the, as well. These are radiations that can come in and literally knock atoms apart, basically. Yeah, yeah. And they can really, what, how they affect the human body is they um, do damage to mostly your DNA. Yeah. And they also can actually cause some severe burns as well that won't ever, you know, they take a long, long, long time to heal. And sometimes they don't ever heal. Yeah. yeah. And so basically, there's, of course, two, uh, again, there's sort of nuclear fission and there's nuclear fusion. And fission yeah. is the splitting apart of heavy yeah. atoms, and fusion is the joining of light atoms. Right. And both of those end up releasing enormous amounts of energy. Two, yeah. like, 
Nothing on Earth can ever, you know, it happens billions of times on the sun per right. second, right. but on right. this is it's massive amounts of energy we're right. talking about. So we have a, a photo one will show the, the process of nuclear fission. So you take a big atom, you slam something like a sure. neutron into it, it splits apart. Some yeah. other neutrons may go flying loose. If you do that the right way, yeah, it creates they, this they tra chain reaction, right. and uh, the more big atoms, but those they yeah. send off more neutrons. Yeah, and then it, all it took was 14 pounds of this plutonium right. or uranium in the Fat Boy and Little Man in, right. uh, in in Nagasaki and Hiroshima. 14 pounds of substance to release not just a thousand. Uh, how they measure the you know the energy released by these bombs is not by like a ton of. Of, of TNT. That's how they right. usually use scale it. Kilotons. Yeah, they use a kiloton, right. and then this was 15 kilotons, that's and that's what created the bomb on Hiro Hiroshima. It's right. 15 kilotons okay. of energy. And it was basically from a, a softball size. Softball size, 14 size. pounds. Yeah. That's it. Of dense, heavy stuff. Yeah. And they basically surrounded that with commercial explosives, standard commercial explosives, when they all blew up and yeah. this in to where it became what they call a critical mass, right? Yeah, it was more of kind of like a, a sleeve and baseball oh. mechanism where it was plutonium here and then the neutron that needed to start it was shot into it like that and poof, there it went. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. Pretty, I mean, it's amazing science, but unfortunately for the wrong reason. Right, right. <laughs> and then, so the, the, the types of nuclear radiation <coughs> are shown in our, <coughs> excuse me, our next picture. And there are several here. So we get these alpha particles, sure. big chunks of, of, of nuclei, basically, go rather slowly, or very easy to stop, yep. but very damaging when they do hit, because yeah. they, they, have, they pack so much momentum because they've got so much mass. They right? do, yeah. So it's two protons, two neutrons, right. and the, you know, a piece of paper can easily stop it. Um, the outer layer of your skin can stop it as well. So it's not the one that uh, kind of does a ton of external uh, damage, but if somehow you were to ingest a, uh, an alpha source, an alpha source, then you, you know. It's going to take out your intestines pretty yeah, 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 so that's, it's not good. And then uh, I guess the next one from there would be beta, right. uh, beta radiation, and that's an electron. And that can go through, you know, a cutting board, piece of size, thick piece of plastic. Mm -hmm. um, and that's just an electron that, um, you know, it can penetrate, uh, if we're talking about human uh, radiation now, it can penetrate the, you know, most of your outer layer of skin and into your kind of fat tissues right. and that sort of thing. Right. Again, more dangerous and all, but really what people worry about much more is x-rays, the gamma rays, right? Sure. Yeah, x-rays, um, gamma rays. Gamma rays um, um, can penetrate through lead, and that's why you need a big, thick uh, wall of concrete to right. be underneath or in front of you to, to stop these. And then the, the next one after that is the uh, neutron. And the neutron, uh, while it is a particle radiation, has enough energy to get through lead and you know even some of concrete. Right. So that's the one that you really need to be careful about. Right, and the, uh, I mean, if you may recall some, a couple of decades ago, there was talk about neutron bombs specifically where they, they would release a bunch of neutron radiation. The theory was these would be great because they would leave Infrastructure intact, a relatively small explosion, flooding an area with neutron radiation, and just kill off all the people, believe the buildings, and then you could, <coughs> your area would be so, clean. I mean, I don't know how we get these morbid ideas. Yeah. <laughs> but That's crazy. Somebody out there is, yeah, so um, the, the, the other devastating thing, as you mentioned about neutron radiation, is that it turns the environment radioactive. Right. I mean, maybe that's what stopped them ultimately. They realized you have a city that looks intact, but you're not going to want no, to live there. Nobody because, will, yeah. Because then the, the very walls of the buildings are re-radiating yep. back at you, gamma rays, x-rays, yeah. e beta. E even the soil, the yep. trees, the plants, right. everything are going to... Different ones that are going to produce, depending on what they hit, are going to produce different radioactive isotopes, which are going to yep. decay at different rates. So there'll yep. be some that will decay quickly. Others that will last for months. Others that will sure. last for years or decades or centuries, right? Even if you say... I was nowhere near you, let's say a hundred, uh, like a thousand miles away, you got exposed to severe neutron radiation, and I took a plane and arrived half an hour after you had been exposed. You would be emitting radiation right. to me. Right, in, in probably, possibly dangerous doses. The, the, yeah. the, uh, possibly fatal, yeah. if I was around you and close right. enough. So yeah. neutron radiation is, is, is a, a deadly thing. Right, now neutron radiation isn't typically produced very much at all, at least by, by the standard fission atomic bombs, right? But Correct. When you get the, the hydrogen bombs, they're called H bombs, when mm -hmm. you're doing fusion, yep. then you are getting neutron yeah. radiation. Right? And so these thermonuclear is the right. technical term, right. but most people know them as hydrogen bombs. And these are kind of the souped up, packed up uh, ultra nuclear bombs. They start with a fission reaction, and you need the normal, say, the normal uh, 
uh, Nagasaki or Hiroshima bomb to get this going, right. and then they compress hydrogen and into deuterium, which is just right. two hydrogen atoms together, and then from there it creates a massive fusion reaction. Now, instead of splitting atoms, you're joining atoms right. together, and that releases a ton of neutrons, which right. accelerates the initial uh, fission reaction, and then you just get on, on the order of, instead of 15 kilotons, we're talking about 15,000, a thousand times bigger than Nagasaki. And so you're going from a blast radius of five kilometers, right. That's, I mean, that's enough to take out any city, really, to a blast radius of not kilometers, but 40 miles. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, that's like something to put it in scale. That means all of Oahu is not just radiated, it's completely right. incinerated. Yeah. Done. Yeah. I mean, yeah. You got a, basically, a, a fireball that big. You know? why, why did we create? Yeah. Why, I, yeah. What's, what's, what's the point of that? We'll touch on that later, right. I right. think. So and, and then so so taking us back to the Marshall, so uh, we, we started doing some testing there, and you can sort of see why they want if, you, if you're going to test nasty unknown weapons, you want to do it in sort of the most most remote place you can possibly do it, right? And here was a place stuck in the, Mar the Marshall Islands are actually a fairly big country; they right. spread over thousands of square miles of ocean. And we talk in Bikini are the far northwest corner of the Marshalls, the least inhabited part. They pulled the people off and sort of turned those into testing grounds. They tested bombs from essentially post-World War II, I guess into the 60s maybe. Yep. Um, I think the first thermonuclear one was 58. Right. Yeah, so they were um, still doing right. these, you know, the yeah. traditional ones. Yeah, and these, these make just incredible uh, explosions. Uh, maybe a third uh, photo will, will show us. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you begin to get some some sense of, of this, and then the, the next, the fourth photo yeah. actually even shows us. See, this was done. You can see the little palm trees. Yeah, and this was done probably off of it. And this, we yeah, this was um, the Baker test, and this was a um, couple seconds after it was uh, detonated. And this is only a 20 kiloton bomb. That's a that's not. We're not talking thermonuclear right. here. That was just the 20 kilotons. Yeah. And they they had set up there are all the chips in the lagoon to sort of see what the impacts are going to be <clears throat> and a surface level blast there. Yeah. And <clears throat> of course the worst part of this was they were also testing new bomb designs, some of which turned out to be sort of duds. And you know, in a good, a good A-bomb, everything uh, fissions, right? And everything's sort of broken apart. You've had this huge blast of energy, radiation, but then it's pretty much all gone, right? Mm -hmm. But in a dud, an H-bomb kind of dud, you end up with like heaps of stuff left over yeah, that it, hasn't quite it, done it. It's, it's not just that it didn't detonate, right. it's still radioactive. Right. It's still yeah, putting it's stuff very, out. very, yeah, very, I mean, it's hotter than the stuff they make nuclear fuel rods out of, right? Yeah. And just, and this stuff's now scattered across your landscape. Yeah. Uh, and that's what happened on, on and both, and we talking in Bikini, yeah. basically, the islands were pretty much sterilized. Uh -uh. It kind of makes you think, uh, what were we thinking? <laughs> you know? Yeah. yeah. Uh, why do you Why do you want to unleash that level of devastation? Uh, sure. Yeah. Uh, but <clears throat> and there's all kinds of interesting sort of social aspects of that too. I mean, yes, of course they, they did it out there in the Marshalls because one, it wasn't in the U.S. <laughs> right. Uh, and two, it was. It was very remote. It was it, yeah. there was a small population as you could probably find anywhere. But uh, people did get exposed. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, and um, I think the first uh, thermonuclear bomb was Castle Bravo, and that did a lot, a lot of damage because the U.S. didn't think it was going to be that big. They thought it was going to be on the order of six, um, six thousand kilotons or six megatons, mm -hmm. and it was performed. I guess performed is not the great <laughs> word, but that's what they called it. Performed better than they thought it was going to, and was double the size, more than double. It was fifteen megatons. Wow. So it was double what they thought it was going to be. Wow. So that was where a lot of the problem came from. And an interesting uh, anecdote around that too is Castle Bravo, a lot of the fallout or the fallout spread all over the <laughs> islands, but there was a Japanese fishing vessel, the Lucky um, Fishing Vessel number 24, I think it was called. But they got dosed with all this fallout, and so there was 20, uh, <coughs> 24 uh, fishermen who became acutely radiation sick. And you know, um, back in Japan, it caused huge uproar because everything was very sensitive. We were talking only 12, 10, 12 years after, right. you know, uh, 80,000 people were wiped out twice. Yeah. And um, yeah, I mean, it's just kind of, uh, again, it makes me think, what were we thinking? <laughs> 
Great. Uh, Dara Carroll is with me today in the studio. I'm your host, Ethan Allen. You're here with us on Likeable Science. We're going to take a one minute break and then we'll be right back. Hi, I'm Pete McGuinness Mark. And every Monday at one o'clock, I'm the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Research in Manoa. And at that program, we bring to you a whole range of new scientific results from the university, ranging from everything from exploring the solar system to looking at the Earth from space, going underwater, talking about earthquakes and volcanoes, and other things which have a direct relevance not only to Hawaii, but also to our economy. So please try and join me one o'clock on a Monday afternoon to Think Tech Hawaii's Research in Manoa, and see you then. Good afternoon, my name is Howard Wig. I am the proud host of Code Green, a program on Think Tech Hawaii. We show at three o'clock in the afternoon every other Monday. My guests are specialists, both from here and the mainland on energy efficiency, which means you do more for less electricity and you're generally safer and more comfortable while you're keeping dollars in your pocket. And you're back here on Likeable Science. I'm your host, Ethan Allen, here on Think Tech Hawaii. With me today is Dara O'Carroll, uh, a doctor who uh, was just at a radiation conference. We've been talking about radiation, uh, what, what it is, sure. how it's produced, how, how it was used in the Marshall Islands. We didn't talk in the first half a little bit about the dosing, how it's measured. You know, yeah. I mean, you get a lot of radiation, you get a little bit of radiation. Sure. And yeah. they use a, a scale called Gray's, which is... Yeah, it's not Gray's Anatomy, right. but um, it's named after a scientist named Gray. And um, so Gray is the amount of radiation that can be imparted on any object, really okay. kind of any inanimate object or human. But um, my understanding is that the sievert is usually used in when we're talking medical purposes. Okay and when it's imparted on a human. Okay. But they're both the same dosage. Mm -hmm. They translate one gray equals one millisievert. Okay. Um, to put it in perspective, I mean, radiation is all around us. Sure, we get, we get some it's background. Background, all the time. It's right. apart from the Big Bang, apart from the sun, right. apart from everything kind of going around. Even our bones emit a little bit of radiation. Mm -hmm. um, and so the average dose that we are, every human on the Earth is uh, subjected to in one year is two millisieverts. So that's a, a thousandth of a sievert. A, a thousandth of a sievert, right, right. yeah. So that's what we're talking. Two one thousandths of a sievert. Yeah, so that's what we're talking about in background, average right. background, you know. Presumably doing little, if any, real harm. Sure, right. yeah. And so that's the accumulation of radiation in throughout 365 days. Right. Um, a chest X-ray, it takes um, 40 chest X-rays to equal two millisieverts. Okay. So uh, one chest X-ray doesn't do, you know, a ton. There is, you know, if you're getting a lot of X-rays, then yeah. It will add on to your accumulation dose. Right. A CT scan is about, CAT scan of the chest or the abdomen is about 10 millisieverts. Oh, so you're, you're, you know, yeah. multiply times five your, uh, your dose throughout the year. Yeah. So that's a significant amount. Sure. And there's actually some fascinating studies that uh, the Japanese are conducting um, in Hiroshima of they're able to see the uh, DNA breakage just after a CAT scan, and they're able to see the chromosome change. If you were to put a cell, if I was to get like direct radiation onto a part of your skin cells that are living and put that under a microscope, you'd be able to see the chromosomes actually break. Mm -hmm. But they get fixed, but you know, ideally, <laughs> yeah, maybe not quite right. Not quite right. Yeah. So even after a CAT scan, so when we're talking about radiation from nuclear fallout, right. We're not on the millisievert dose anymore. Right. We're on the full sievert. Right, so, which is a thousand times. That is a thousand, a thousand times. years worth of sure. uh, yeah. radiation. You know? Yeah, and so, so the, the bomb victims in Hiroshima and Nagasaki that were unfortunately uh, spared from the you know, uh, thermal incineration, the ones that were, sure, right. yeah, the, the ones that survived um, experienced anywhere from two gray mm -hmm. to about or millisieverts to about 30, uh, two sieverts to 30 sieverts. Right. And on average, uh, there's a concept called LD50 as well. And so, lethal dose 50, right? Yeah, the lethal dose of uh, 50. So if somebody was to expose uh, um, 100 people to this amount of radiation, 50 of them would perish. Right. And usually they perish in about, we can talk about how they perish, right. but in about a week to two weeks. Right. The LD50, so uh, where half, half the population would perish, is about 3.5 gray, wow. okay. 3.5 sieverts. Right. And so two sieverts is significant it's enough to cause, dose. it's a whopping dose right. to cause increased rates of, uh, if you don't pass from it, right. you could still pass away from it. Right. 
um, but cause increased rates of cancer, both solid types of cancer, like liver cancer, um, brain tumors, uh, thyroid cancer, to increased rates of uh, leukemia, bone cancers, all sorts of problems, cataracts, um, liver problems, high cholesterol, high blood pressure. Um, so there's a lot of significant medical issues. Right, yeah, some lasting years and years and likely shortening your life. Um, it's yeah. Certainly, certainly impacting the quality of your life. Yeah. So yeah. it's, uh, yeah, nothing, nothing to sneeze at. And really, uh, I mean, we see this, right? In, for instance, the Marshallese population has, you know, rates of certain cancers that are yeah. dozens of times, hundreds of times, yeah. in some cases, higher than sort of standard world population yeah. rates of these, for these cancers. Yeah. And then in the studies in Japan right. that have, sure. have shown that the increased rate of leukemia is about one and a half times the normal. Wow. So you get a 50% increase of rate of, try, of getting leukemia. And that usually happens about uh, 10 years after the ex radiation exposure. Um, they found the solid cancers usually happen a little bit later, right. take a little bit more time to manifest um, 20 years later. And they're about, um, you know, depending on which cancer you're talking about, five times more likely. Right. So it's, 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 uh, significant, if you don't pass away from it, there's still a significant amount of damage that's done throughout your, your lifetime. Yeah. And uh, the immediate acute effects are not at all pleasant, right? No, yeah, I mean, acute radiation syndrome usually affects, if you're, I would say the, 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 the dose to really start feeling it is, uh, you would, is about one gray-ish uh -huh. to really feel a, a, to two gray acute radiation syndrome. Mm -hmm. And um, it usually affects the rapid turnover cells right. first. So um, skin being one, right. um, so you kind of, uh, and hair, losing your hair. Right. But then also the really important stuff, like your, G, your GI tract, GI tract right. the intestine lining, because we're, we're always turning over the GI tract, right. um, those epithelial cells. Right. Then also your bone marrow, and your bone marrow is responsible for hugely important. Like you need making blood. Yeah. Making blood, right. um, you're going to get anemic. Yeah. You're going right. to be short of breath. You're going to lose your white cells, so you can't fight off infection. Right. And and the the way that most of acute radiation syndrome patients pass away from is they get really low blood counts, so they um, have trouble breathing. And also they get uh, it's like having HIV. You right. can't fight infections. Right. You've got sometimes no white blood cells. Right. You probably can't absorb nutrients that you need to yeah. desperately to get well because sure. the intestines are, are basically trashed yeah. down. And then you don't have the cells that are responsible for patching up for clots as well, the platelets. Right. And right. so you're, and the blood that you're putting in is just being usually pooped out. Right. Yeah. And, and uh, you're bleeding from every orifice. Right. It's, it's really, it's a really unf a scary, scary type of uh, death. Well, on that cheering note, <laughs> this is likable science after all. Uh, we, we should mention one of my favorite little animals, the tardigrade, and we have a, we have a photo of one. And these are little tiny oh, things, he's cute, uh, with eight legs. Little, I say little, they're you know less than a millimeter long usually, so they're very very small. But they're incredibly tough, these animals. And they, you point out the, the LD50 on people, it's about three gray it's roughly. Three point five gray. Three point five. Yeah. These things, the LD50 is about five thousand gray. What are they made of? <laughs> they are, are they made of plutonium? Or <laughs> they, are, they are tough little things. Uh, they've yeah. set them up and exposed them, literally put them in a hard vacuum of space, exposed to the vacuum, the ionizing radiation of space. And while that eventually knocks a bunch of them out, a fair number of them actually can survive that and, and yeah. come back and, and thrive after that. 50 of them. Uh, no, <laughs> half of them. Um, you, know, the, the, you, can, you can freeze them down at you know, like minus 20 degrees for weeks and weeks, and they'll come back from that. You can Easy. freeze them down to minus 200 yeah. degrees even for a few minutes. Can you go back to that photo again? It's a little, a little, yeah. Is he smiling? I can't. <laughs> they are very cute. They're called like little water bearers is, is one of their names, because they, sort of, they are sort of cute looking. Uh. Uh, they live all over the world. They're not actually an extremophile, that is, they're not really made to live in extreme environments, but they're just sort of incredibly versatile and they can take, they, you can dry them out and their, their uh, body goes from being 85% water down to being 3% water. Jeez. And then they can come back from that state. I mean, if we go from down to probably, you probably oh, better than you, 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 Yeah, you lose, you lose 5% of your body weight in water, 10%, you're in nah, you're rough right. shape. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> and they can lose you know, huge amounts. Yeah, so yeah. They're, they're, they're sort of our, uh, you know, the radiation being a theme, I just thought we had, had, to, oh, had yeah. to bring them and give them a little kudos. You know, yeah, for, for being, we yeah. should have a jar right here, <laughs> a jar of them. <laughs> so we know if, if the world ever gets in bad shape, they're probably going to take over, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and they'll become huge. <laughs> they'll be like a snuffleupagus, and we can all give them hugs. <laughs> There we go. I like it. I like it. Okay. Um, anyhow, um, so 
what, what's, what's, I guess, what, what's your take, take away from the, both the, the Japanese conference on radiation and now, now having this conversation here yeah. on, on what, what it's not in the Marshall Islands? You know, I mean, uh, there's always, I mean, uh, it kind of seems like we're going into another, to, not to get too political, another, like a, another Cold War type of yeah. thing. And tensions with Russia are always there. But uh, I, <clears throat> Hiroshima, they have this um, flame, they call it the eternal flame in the uh, Memorial Park, and it's, it's going to be lit until the world is completely rid of nuclear weapons. Mm -hmm. And I hope that one day that flame is extinguished, because I, what's the point? I mean, if, why continue to have them? Why continue to use them? Why continue to even keep them in your back pocket? It's all, you know, these uh, big countries and, you know, men at the top kind of just well, not wanting to back down. And I think for the good of humanity, and they should just all be extinguished, you know? Yeah, no, I, I agree. And then you can see that even the peaceful uses of, of nuclear radiation in power plants, if they're not properly designed, you know, I mean, Japan's going to be sure. dealing with Fukushima for yeah. a century or more easily. And, um, and, and nobody's really talking about it, but the, the amount of nuclear power plants built around, being built around the world is, is, is rapidly accelerating, yeah. and most of them are being built in China. Yeah. Yeah. And so I hope they you know, adhere to the strict building codes, and we don't... Sarah. Notorious for not doing. <laughs> yes, um, and so I think in the next five years, uh, this summer, give or take, there's going to be 30 nuclear power plants in China being built Ooh. in the five to ten years. That's a huge amount. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's it's a sobering thing. This is a good time to sort of step back and think: Do we really want this stuff around? If, if you're going to use it, for God's sake, take yeah. care of it, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. Take, you know, put every safeguard you can think of yeah. around it. Because my, my personal opinion: If a nuclear power plant saves us from you know more carbon dioxide pollutants, then yes, let's just do it responsibly. Yeah, yeah. absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, irresponsible use is clearly an awful, awful yeah. thing. On so many levels. Well, hey, Dara, thank you so much for being here on great Electrical to be here. Science. Uh, it was great, great to have you back here. Look forward to get, getting you on here again. Okay. And I hope you'll come back next week and join us in another episode of Likeable Science here on Think Tech Hawaii.